Welcome, beloved viewers, to Science and Spirituality for our two-part series on holodynamics. Dr. Victor Vernon Wolf is the chairman of the board of the U.S.-based International Academy of Holodynamics and author of 10 books, including The Dance of Life, Transform Your World Now. He is an internationally known public speaker, an experienced trainer, seminar leader, therapist, and entrepreneur. Dr. Wolf has a bachelor's degree in physics, a master's degree in religious education and educational psychology, and a doctorate in child development and family relations. Through books and workshops, he teaches the science of holodynamics. Holodynamics is the study of life energy and the human potential. It says we are in a living and ever-changing holographic information system whose structure is deeply connected with human consciousness. Our Supreme Master Television correspondent recently had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Vernon Wolf about this science. We begin with him providing a further explanation of the term holodynamics. Basically, it's reality. We live in a conscious universe. Here's one of the things we found out. That everything is driven by potential. This is David Bohm, Science and the Implicate Order. He says, everything is driven by potential. So every set of circumstances we're in is driven by some potential. And we figured out, well, if we apply that, how does that apply to human problems? Guess what? Every problem is driven by its solution. It means we set the whole thing up. We designed it so we could manifest our potentials. And people who get a hold of that dimension suddenly realize it. But to get a hold of that dimension, you have to put on, like, new glasses. I call them holographic glasses. What exactly is a hologram? Dr. Wolf now explains. You take a beam of light and uh, split it in two so there's two beams that are perfectly harmonized. They reflect one beam down onto a photographic plate. They take the other beam and they reflect it off a three-dimensional image and it goes down onto the same plate. Now, when you shine a light through the plate, it shows the three-dimensional image. So you can put the three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional plate, which means you can take complex things and put them into simpler things. Guess who the simpler things are? It's uh, us. Us, yeah. It's us. So if you look at Stephen Hawking's book, he'll show you, he goes through this whole thing on the universe in a nutshell, and he says, look, it's a holographic universe. And he shows a multidimensional being reflecting onto a, a plate, which is us, in physical reality. So this is what's called an information set. From a holodynamic perspective, information is the heart of everything. The universe appears conscious. Matter, time, and life itself are woven into a complex web of information that is active and closely connected together. So when you talk about something that's in form, it's made of information. information. And therefore, all of us are made of information, but not just humans. It means everything in the world is made of information. What is known to the part is also known to the whole. And what is known to the whole is known to the part. Because all the information and matter and light and everything that's going into a black hole is being transformed into another energy system or information system and resonating it out. So the center of everything has a black hole. If you look at the universe this way, then what happens is everything matches from bigness to smallness. You have to consider it as a holographic universe. Information organizes from micro to macro, from smallest to bigness. So the changing of a single thought it ripples out quantumly. So when you have a single thought, literally, it's known to the whole. It On affects the whole. the whole. There's no insignificant. And there's no such thing as a real big significant thing, because everything is as big as it gets. We're in an information set. And what's emerging in this field of consciousness is individuation. And it's our interaction together that creates the increase in our quality of consciousness. We call it evolution. 
all species and all life forms on the planet are increasing their level of consciousness, including humans. That's our interaction together that creates unique expressions of consciousness again. According to Dr. Wolf, our consciousness is constantly shaped by spinners of information that come from hyperspace, or space that is beyond the confines of our universe. It's outside of time and inside of time at the same time. It's faster than the speed of light and beyond our own sensory perceptions. The information is organized into units of cause, or holodynes. In other words, the experiences we have are controlled by our holodynes. However, as conscious beings, Dr. Wolf says we can access and learn to manage our holodynes and help them unfold their potential. The body is conscious. There are five trillion life forms in your body. Don't you think they're communicating all the time? When I want to raise my left arm, I raise my left arm and not my right leg. So they know what we're doing. They're information systems. System. They're individual species. The well, microtubules are part of them. The holodynes are part of them. But let me explain, first of all, what microtubules are. They're little small tubes. They're only 23 nanometers across. If you take a cell in your body, like say this is a cell, the entire surface of the cell and all through it is woven with microtubules. Microtubule associated protein strain, maps. And the maps hold the information in place. But it's a biological mechanism that holds consciousness in its place and stores it holographically inside your microtubules. All your senses on your skin, your nose, your olfactory nerves, all of it, taste, touch, everything. Spinning it and putting it in and storing it as holodynes. We call them holodynes because it means a whole unit of power or cause. Holo meaning whole and dyne meaning like, it's like force power. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it has the power to cause. Dr. Wolf teaches that it is vital that each of us realize what he calls our full potential self, as this way we can easily solve issues and live a smooth and harmonious life. The key is that your full potential self, your hyperspatial counterpart, has already figured out your entire menu of options and you always have choice. And if you choose the one that gives you the real eyes and the real power and the real life, then you can realize what you have to do. So the realize help you realize. When you transform these holodynes, no matter how bad they are, no matter what history they have, doesn't matter if the history is in your past or even in the future, you are the co-creator. Your choice makes all the difference in the world. If this is the holodyne, you look at it through the eyes of your full potential and you can see its full potential. So you surround it with love, and then your full potential and its full potential have a little conversation. And you find out what you, you, you actually negotiate with it. You communicate with the holodyne directly. And you have to treat it with respect and real appreciation, because some of these holodynes have been working for centuries. You inherit them okay. through your microtubules, because the sperm and the egg all have microtubules, and the memories of all your lifespan and all your ancestors' lifespan, all the holodynes, are there in your microtubules. And they can do that because any holographic plate, photographic plate, if you put a memory in from this angle and you show it the light from that angle, it'll show that memory. But if you put it in from this angle and then show the light from that angle, it'll show that. So the memory is all recallable. So when somebody says, well, you're just a chip off the old block, well, guess what? You know, your grandpa used to do that. Well, guess what? You are now using the holodynes of your ancestors. So all of these holodynes are living entities. According to holodynamics science, when one becomes aware of the multiple dimensions of the universe, solutions to issues suddenly become apparent. Dr. Wolf uses the work of British physicist Paul Townsend to explain. Paul Townsend says, look, there are at least ten dimensions that we can measure. And most people are only aware of four. He says, look, let's let P represent the number of dimensions. So it's P, one, two, three, four, to ten plus. And then we'll say dimensions is brains. 
And we started with people, just ordinary people with normal problems. And we found out that if they got that they could change the number of P, that is, develop one more dimension of their thinking process, they could discover their problems. Like most people are forebrain. They can see depth, width, and height. And then they have this intuitive sense about something else. Gut feeling or something like that. So maybe they are forebrain. But as soon as you get into five brain, which I say is putting on the holographic glasses, all of a sudden you see all kinds of new dimensions. And as soon as you get into those new dimensions, they're not new, but they're new to the person, they could, they, just like that, they started solving their problems. There are at least ten dimensions. And others say, enfolded in those dimensions that we are not aware of, are the solutions to everything we face. We asked Dr. Wolf about his view on the relationship between belief in God and the science of holodynamics. So if you believe that God is this kind of God or that kind of God, guess what message will come through? Your kind of God, usually. Now, if you're skeptical, that's good, as long as you're an open skeptic. So everybody has this analytical part of them. If it closes up, you've said, I'm dying now. But if it's open, it can take the concept of God you've been taught, and then this new information coming from your full potential self, which will improve the quality of your relationship with God, or with any of your religious belief systems. So you actually could make a better Buddhist or a better Catholic. Vibrant viewers, Please join us next Monday on Science and Spirituality for the conclusion of our interview with the thoughtful Dr. Wolf. For more details on Holodynamics, please visit www.holodynamics.com. Books by Dr. Vernon Wolf are also available at the same website. Thank you for your presence on today's program. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom, after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May your life be blessed with divine love, wisdom, and grace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.